Oh, hello! My name is Farah, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. Okay, so I think by the time you guys are seeing this, tomorrow is Valentine's Day, which means that, you know, love is in the air, whatever. Um, I don't know. I know. I've never really gotten, I've never gotten feeling sad on Valentine's Day or excited about it. Maybe I'm just a heartless, non-romantic, I guess, I don't know. But I do want to come to you today specifically with recommendations for romance reading, uh, which is something I do a lot of. So I guess maybe not. I guess I just don't really care about Valentine's Day. Anyway, all that to say, there's a lot of like kind of love related recommendation things happening at this time of year. So I thought I would kind of jump in. Now, last year, I did an entire month around romance reading in February. I kind of had a bunch Bunch of videos so if you're interested in that I'm sure I will have some of those linked in the cards you can definitely find that on my channel but someone commented on one of my videos and was like oh I was gonna suggest that you do recommendations for closeted romance readers but I see that you have a bunch of where to start with videos so I guess you've already done that and yes some of these are gonna be overlaps in terms of recommendations but I kind of liked that <laughs> as the framing device of like people who do like romance or romantic elements in their books but kind of like haven't owned it yet or like come into feeling comfortable with just like owning that they like that in books. I think maybe they commented that on my most surprising uh, reads of 2018 because I definitely went on a little tangent about that of like, hey, there's so much for people to read if they could just kind of, kind of get over that label of romance reading. Um, so I came up with 10 books that I think would be good picks for people who are not like comfortable identifying as a romance reader, but do enjoy romantic elements in books. Now, some of these would technically be considered romances, and some of them probably wouldn't quite qualify. In case you're wondering the like accepted industry definition of a romance genre book is a book where there is a romantic relationship that is the like one of the main features of the plot like it has to be a main element of the book to that by the end of the book or by the end of the series the people that are in the relationship have to be either happily ever after so like they're just together forever or at least happily for now which is more common for instance in like YA type settings that by the end of it they need to be together basically and settled for this foreseeable future. So not all of these would technically fall under the category of romance genre, but most of these probably would. And I tried to think of things that I thought would be approachable in terms of the romance as a major element, but probably not the only element that's happening. I tried to pick books that frankly did not have embarrassing covers for the most part, because I think that is a big turnoff for people. And finally, just books that um, would appeal to various different types of other genre reading. So enough of my yammering, let's just get down to my 10 recommendations. I'm going to start with recommendations for people who already know they like fantasy because that was the easiest one for me to get to. So probably the number one place I would suggest somebody who did not think that they liked romance but does think that they like fantasy to start would be Heartstone by L. Catherine White. And that is because this is retelling what is arguably the er text of the romance genre as we know it today, which is Pride and Prejudice. I recommended this so many times, but this is Pride and Prejudice, but with dragons. Um, Lizzie Bennet is like a herb healer and the Darcy character is like a badass evil creature fighter who has his own dragon. This is just really well done. There's definitely romance happening in this, but it's not, it's never anything like there's no explicit anything happening. It's very similar to Pride and Prejudice in that respect. Um, so this would be my number one recommendation of where to start. I haven't read the sequel yet, but I'm going to. And um, there are two planned sequels to this. So if you like it, there will be two more books. My number two recommendation would definitely be Grace Draven in general. So I really like um, Phoenix Unbound, the new series that she has coming out, which is her first from a major publisher. But I really, the great, the book I love from her is Radiance. I don't think I was the one who recommended this to Leanna from Leanna's Library, but like I co-signed that recommendation hard. And this is like one of the only romance as she's ever read and loved as a fantasy reader. It's just so good. It's very low drama in terms of the romance piece of it and very, very slow burn. And the world in general is, is quite interesting and there's a lot of like political machinations. So Radiance by Grace Draven would definitely be my second recommendation slash just Grace Draven in general. Another fantasy book that I've read recently that I think could be a good kind of gateway uh, one would be The Wolf and the Whale by Jordana Max Brodsky. Now she also has an urban fantasy series that I have not yet read, but based on enjoying this book, I definitely am going to check out. This is an Inuit Viking 
world and the heroine, and I'm gonna call her heroine because the pronouns she uses are she, her pronouns, but the heroine um, is a shaman in her Inuit culture. And because of her role, basically, she is raised as both a boy and a girl. So she's non-binary, which I think is an interesting aspect. And she, a lot of her kind of development is her kind of coming to terms with that dual identity. And then the hero is uh, from Viking culture and Ragnarok happens. Like it's really good. I think it's a really interesting book and it's it has a very epic feel to it. So if you really like epic fantasy but want to try some romance, that would be my recommendation. And then three urban fantasy recommendations. So moving out of sort of like high fantasy into more like kind of with our world fantasy. Um, I mean, if I'm going to urban fantasy, like my number one recommendation is going to be Kate Daniels, duh. I mean, Alona Andrews in general. I think if you want to read somebody who has interesting magic systems, really fun, funny characters, very awesome heroines, like very compelling female leads and really fun mystery plots with a lot of magic sprinkled in, like any of the books that Alona Andrews writes you you might enjoy. Um, in particular, the Kate Daniel series, I think is like the really good one. And it has a great romance that unfolds over the entirety of the series. Um, you know, it, it's slow burn, it takes several books for the main couple in this to get together. And then it's them sort of like, trying to get their life stabilized, basically. So yeah, I mean, this is she's my Alona Andrews is my favorite currently writing author team. So of course, I'm going to recommend that a similar one that I've recently read and really enjoyed and is sort of like filling some of the kind of hole that the Kate Daniels books wrapping up has left in my reading life is Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Roanhorse. I'm very excited for the next one. This is post apocalyptic, think like Mad Max Fury Road kind of vibe. The magic system, it's, I guess it's urban fantasy, but it's really more sort of like just dystopian, like post-apocalyptic more than urban fantasy, I guess. Um, it's, it's Native American, like Navajo based uh, magic system. The heroine uh, is super, it's a very dark book. <laughs> like it's darker definitely than the Kate Daniels world. And it's a slow burn romance. I've only read the first one. Um, we definitely kind of know who the couple of it is probably going to be, but like, it is still unfolding, we're not totally sure. So I think that this definitely, I think a lot of people don't even necessarily realize that this would, this is considered to be um, a fantasy romance, but it is, and um, it's really good. Now, the one on this list that I think is probably the hardest sell just because I think this is the most romancy of I think any of the ones I'm gonna recommend is the Side Changeling series by Nalini Singh. The other thing is that the early books in this series have extremely, in my opinion, embarrassing covers. I know some people like traditional romance covers. So like if you are a romance reader who loves them, I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just saying I personally don't like them and I think it is a barrier to new readers coming into the genre. So just so you know, the Side Changeling series eventually got these non clinchy covers because non romance readers started reading them and were like, shit, these are good. <laughs> and so they started giving us like less overtly romantic covers. But do know that the early ones are more traditional romancy. Um, these are also more romancy in the sense that each book has a new couple that is getting together. So it has new main characters in every book and you are seeing all of these different stories in this fantasy world. But basically the reason why I think this is a good pick for somebody who likes kind of an urban fantasy type fantasy book, but is uh, open to or interested in romance, is that I think that the political machinations in this one are really interesting. Like I really enjoy the sort of chess piece element of this, like the strategy, there's definitely like a very well thought out overarching plot in this book or in this series. So basically the author had kind of a season one that wrapped up with the first 14 books and is now starting a second season. So if you want an ongoing series that has a lot of thought put into how it is progressing and like is very carefully plotted out in terms of like the bigger picture of what's going on, maybe kind of like Game of Thrones, think like how each book is like building on each other kind of thing in terms of who has power and what's going on. Then if and if you're into an urban fantasy setting, I would totally recommend these. I recommend the recommended this series to several people who really ended up loving it. It's not going to be for everyone, but I did want to put it on the list because I think um, it's very bingeable, this series. And I think that once you've experienced some of these other fantasy romances, if you're willing to go a step further and pick up something even more 
more romancy, this I think would be the the natural kind of like next step beyond like a Kate Daniels or a Trail of Lightning kind of thing. Switching gears totally, I wanted to pick a nonfiction choice, so I decided to go with My Life in France by Julia Child. And I picked this because this is maybe one of the most romantic books I've ever read. This like this is about her her life in France with her husband when she was a newlywed post World War II and like how she's falling in love with French culture and French cuisine, of course, like that's a huge that's like a lot of what this is about. But so much of this is also just about like, the beautiful day to day life with her husband and they were both just so stinking in love with each other. They got married later in life and they were just like the loves of each other's lives. And it's just like, you can even see the picture of her with like, this is from Valentine's Day and they both have little hearts. Like they always had these like fun postcards made up for Valentine's Day. It's just like, this is one of my very favorite memoirs. This is like a probably a top three memoir for me. I love it. Just it's so exuberant and joyful. But a huge piece of that is the relationship with her husband. So if you've not read this, this is like such a good memoir. Memoir. And I think if you're looking for something that is nonfiction, but has like a love story in it, I would definitely point you here. And then I could have picked a bunch of things for sort of more like lit fic type romance or love stories, because there's a lot of them in literary fiction. Now, a lot of them are very tragic and whatever. But I mean, like Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre literally are the two like er text of romance genre fiction as we have it today. But I decided to go ahead and pick Possession by A.S. Byatt just because this was like before I thought of myself as a romance reader, I remember being entranced by this book and like really being compelled by the love story element of it. And it's cementing in me that I liked a romantic element in books. And it also has like a historical fiction element. So I thought if you're a historical fiction reader, this could also potentially be a good pick. But I think this was turned into a very lackluster movie, but the book is really excellent. I haven't read it in probably 10 or 15 years at this point. I should probably do that at some point just to see how it holds up. But this is, I decided to make this my sort of representative lit fic pick. That was very rhymy. Similarly, for historical fiction and kind of bridging between historical fiction and mystery, I decided to go with The Witch of Willow Hall because it is a horror, it's sort of like gothic horror, but it's spooky light. It's not, it's like not too scary, I don't think, but it definitely has a very strong romantic element. I actually believe that this was published by one of Harlequin's like non Harlequin titles. Like I think this is meant to kind of be producing romantic historical fiction. So it definitely has a love story element that I thought was really well done and I really enjoyed, but it's also a lot about family dynamics. It's got this gothic horror element to it. So like there's a lot going on and I think it's it's just really enjoyable. Like it's a very enjoyable read to me, you know, read the kind of the description and see if it sounds like something that would work for you. But I thought that might be a good pick for people who like historical fiction or people who like mystery horror stuff. And then my last pick, is J.D. Robb's In Death series. I mean, you guys hear me talk about it a lot, but I would recommend this as something that is a romance series. Like it is a romance series, but it is equally a crime of the week police procedural mystery. Like it is, those are its two genres. And it's also set in the near future. So it also has sort of like a sci-fi element to it, which I think is pretty cool. So yeah, like I think that if you're looking just for, if you, you know, you like a James Patterson, you like an airplane kind of book, and you want some romance, this is where I would go. Also, J.D. Robb slash Nora Roberts like, is a really good commercial fiction writer. She's very proficient and I think she writes interesting characters. I think she handles interesting themes in commercial fiction. Like she addresses heavy shit, I think in a pretty respectful and compelling way. So yeah, I just think all around, it's like one of my very favorite commercial fiction series going right now. And if you like that kind of crime of the week type of mystery, but you want some romance, this is where I would point you. Yeah, so those are my 10 suggestions for closeted romance readers. If you are a closeted romance reader and you're willing to totally shuck the any pretense of it not being romance and you're looking for a place to start, some of the ones that I think are, are kind of good go-tos are um, Act Like It by Lucy Parker, just because it's a contemporary, I think if you read a lot of like YA contemporary romance, this would be a pretty easy transition for you. So I think that's a great one to go to. Um, some of the big breakout titles of the last year were The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang um, and The Wedding Date by Jasmine Gilroy. I think those would be good places to start in terms of sort of like more approachable mainstream romance picks. Um, the Hating Game by Sally Thorne was really popular in that kind of a group. Christina Lauren writes a lot of chiclet slash new adult romance that um, I think has become more mainstream and pushed her more into um, kind of 
a, a more mainstream mindset. People who are not typically romance readers will read Christina Lauren. And um, my favorite from her is Beautiful Secret. I really like that one. But there's a lot of like Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating is really good. Like they have a lot of really good titles. Um, and then for historical, the two main places I would recommend people start if they're interested in historical romance would be Courtney Milan, who is I think in terms of just the actual prose, maybe the best romance writer today. Like I just think she has they're heavier books, basically, like they have some heft to them. And I think The Duchess War is a great place to start. But A Kiss for Midwinter is the novella in that series. It's right after that. And I absolutely adored that book. So that would be a good place to start. Or then Tessa Dare is the other one just because she's very kind of romantic comedy, but in a historical setting. My number one recommendation for her is either A Week to be Wicked or The Duchess Deal. So some bonus like true blue romance recommendations for you there at the end of where to start. If you're willing to just totally give up the pretense of, oh, I'm not a romance reader, those would be some of the places I might start. Um, but hopefully this might be kind of helpful to some of you who are like having some internal uh, reflections and realizing like, you know what? I don't have to be ashamed of the fact that I like romance. So let me dip my toes in the water. Those are some of my recommendations of places that you might start. So anyway, Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Hope you are having a lovely week. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. If you are a romance reader, definitely feel free to shout out some of the places that you send closeted romance readers as a place to start. And I think that will do it. Hope you're having a great one and I will just talk to you soon.